Hi everybody, Richard Drogans here again from Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another walkthrough. Uh, today the product is Legatix, um, based in the UK. Uh, it's been going for a few years now and it's prospering. Uh, with us to tell us a little bit about uh, Legatix, which is a um, sort of transaction management platform, is Daniel Porus. Hi, Dan. Hi, thank you for having me, Richard. Yeah, real pleasure to have you on the show at last. Um, what, I've, what you're looking at at the moment is a pre-populated legal matter. And I want to talk viewers briefly through how you could use Legatix in the context of two of our major use cases. So uh, a banking and finance transaction and a corporate transaction. So to do this, I'll demonstrate how Legatix can be used to manage the workflow of collecting and signing off on documentary deliverables in a banking context and, um, and the signing process in a corporate context. So before diving in, I'll just briefly give some, uh, the viewers some, some context to the pain point that Legatix is solving. So as a former corporate solicitor, I used to have to manage large checklists to manage processes like the closing process. And similarly, if you're a banking and finance lawyer financing, for example, um, an offshore wind farm, the, you know, they tend to be uh, a syndicate of banks and th this involves several banks having to sign off on several documentary deliverables called conditions precedent or um, CPs. And the role of a junior lawyer is to take a, uh, the list of documents and this is typically a, a document like this. Um, so you'll see that this is in the schedule of the loan agreement, can be within the loan agreement itself. And this lists out the uh, documentary deliverables in, in legal language. And what the lawyers have to do is they have to copy and paste this line by line to get into a table, uh, typically in Microsoft Word. So it looks something like this. And then that gets emailed back and forth between the parties. And the problem with this is it is out of date the moment that it is sent out by email. So what then ends up having to happen is in order to get a status update, all parties need to jump on an all parties call once a week, more than once a week, and go line by line through the table trying to figure out what's waiting on whom. A junior lawyer takes detailed notes, updates the table, and then recirculates it around. So um, what I'm gonna do um, in Legatix, uh, I'm gonna show you what you would do is instead of that manual process, what you do is you'd come in and you can add the checklist itself. Um, in the interest of time today, I'm gonna show you one that's been pre-populated, but what you can do is using our market leading import tool, using pattern recognition, it actually takes that um, checklist from the loan agreement, the, 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 um, the schedule, and creates the checklist. But instead of it being a table in Word, what you'll see here is it's a living table within the Legatix platform. It looks a lot like that table in Word, so it's very simple, very intuitive to pick up and to run with. Um, and you see here that there are various documents that are to be provided, in this case, by the borrower. Now, what the borrower would normally do is they would email these documents to the lawyer, but with Legatix, what they can do is they can actually come and they can add the document directly to the Legatix platform. So we're gonna add one here. And what you'll see is as this is added, it automatically updates from to be provided to a waiting review by the firm. The firm can then come in, they can review the document. Uh, and if they're happy with it, they can then change the status from a waiting review to be approved. And this then once again, automatically updates, it notifies the approving parties. So the syndicate of banks here to come in um, to provide their approval so they can review the document themselves within the platform and, and big bank can say, yes, I'm happy with it. Medbank can say that they're happy with it. And when the final tick's given, you see that this automatically updates to approved. And all of this then updates in real time to the overview screen, which I'll show you in just a moment. But what you can also do is you can do things like download the uh, checklist. So you can get a, a bit of a bridge between the old process and the new. You can have a, a Word version that's downloaded. Um, and at the end of your transaction, you can very quickly create your closing set or Bible in just a few clicks of the button. And this is something that as a corporate solicitor, I used to have to spend heaps of time at the end of a transaction creating the index as a Word document and then working with teams to uh, hyperlink it through to the underlying documents to give a record of the transaction. So if we go back to the overview screen uh, for a moment, you'll see now that this is updated in real time. We've now got the two documents that are approved. We've got the 18 that are to be approved. And what I now want to do is um, switch over and just briefly touch on a corporate use case. And I want us to um, imagine we're involved in a corporate M&A transaction and we are coming to the closing process, so completion. And we've got some key agreements that have been negotiated like a sale and purchase agreement. And what we now need to do is we need to get those contracts signed. And you'll see here, we've got three 
agreements in this particular transaction. We've got one that's in that's been executed, one that's to be executed, and one that's in agreed form. And we're separately tracking the status of the documents and then the status of the signature pages that, that are out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the actual documents list. And you'll see here that we're viewing this as the document view. And what I'm going to do is on the sale and purchase deed, I'm going to go through the manual signing action. So there is an alternative option here of actually using our DocuSign integration to sign electronically, but to help manage the manual process of extracting signature pages, generating signing emails, collating, annotating, and dating those documents, we've got our own uh, special tool within Legatix that assists with that. So what I'm gonna do here is if I click on the sale and purchase deed, and we go to the manual signing actions, you see we've got the three actions here, and I'll just quickly walk us through these three. So the first is to extract the signature pages. So on the left-hand side, we have the document itself, the execution version, so we can scroll through. And if we get to the page six, which is the first execution block, then um, we see here that this is the seller's signature page. So um, we add the seller and we've got the buyer here as well. And then if we scroll down to page seven, this is the guarantor's signature page, so we can click on guarantor. And what we can then do is we can extract selected and close in this case. If we were doing multiple documents, it would be extract, selected, and, and move to next. And what this is now doing is it has extracted for us the signature pages. We're now looking at this in the signing view, and we can go through, we can check them if we like, make sure that the software has pulled it correctly. Um, and if we go back to the document view, you see that this is now pulled through the status. So what we can now do is we can say that this is to be executed and we can go ahead and we can take the second action of the manual actions, which is to generate the signing emails. So if we go in here, we are able to put in our law firm's preferred wording for the signing instructions. We have some options here about which files should be attached in the format, but I can then go ahead and generate the signing emails. So this then adds the actual documents. We can further edit this before it goes out to the, um, to the clients. But what we can then do is we can say, send the emails. So these now get sent out. And what uh, subsequently happens is we um, will receive the signed signature pages. Now these can either be added directly um, to Legatix by the individuals, or in this case, let's say that we're receiving them so we can drop them in. So I've got the buyer's signature page which I'm going to uh, add here. We've got the seller's signature page and we've got the guarantor's signature page. And you'll see again from a workflow perspective, this is updating. So it's saying now that it's to be checked. So as the, the law firm, we can come in, we can check, check it here. And if we're happy with it, we can change the status to confirm that it's been correctly signed. And the final step that I'm going to walk us through in the walkthrough today is if we go back to the document view, you see once again that this is updated. So the final step is to take those signed signature pages and I want to collate, annotate and date the fully executed version of the document. So if I go into the manual signing actions, the final step is to collate the signature pages and annotate. And you'll see that on the left hand side, we have the execution version of the document. On the right hand side, we have the signed signature page. So this is the buyer's signature page. I can click on the magnifying glass to check that it's, um, that it's correct. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna drag that to uh, within the execution version. I'm gonna replace the, pa the signature page that it, in, the in, in the execution version. I'm gonna do the same with the sellers. So we'll drag that uh, in front and we will take the guarantor's signature page and that is replacing this particular page here. Final thing I can do is I can go in here and we can stamp today's date. And what we can then do is we can go through and we can save the changes and close. And what you'll see is that this has now been shown as collated. We can check that we're happy with this. So it's our um, dated one. And if we scroll through, this is now the execution version of the document, but with the appropriate um, signed signature pages uh, in here. So. We're happy that that's now fully executed. We can confirm executed. And if we go back to the overview screen, we now can see that this is updated to show that it's the two documents that are executed. The signature page has been updated. <clears throat> 
Um, and yeah, so it's showing the progress. And then at the end of the transaction, similar to uh, in the same way as we could within the CP checklist, you can, in a couple of clicks of the button, create your closing set or Bible.